Hello, welcome back to part two. So, I'm just flowing through this with God. I wasn't even planning to go there with that last video, but we're going to continue where I left off. Some of you are going through hard times with your spouse. You are at the pinnacle right now. There are things that are shifting in your life. Some parts of your life look like a disaster. Some parts of your life, blah, 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 blah. Some of you, when it comes down to your relationship, which you are supposed to do, I'm going to give you this instruction. Your relationship's looking a little shaky right now. If you know your relationship looking a little shaky, I'm going to need you to go pick up this book right now. The five love languages when you're going through hard times. Number one. Number two. If you heard what I said in the previous video, I'm going to need you to write down your issues. This book might help you figure out the things that you're dealing with. Okay. In your relationship. And be able to to identify what needs what the concerns are in your relationship number two you need to figure out what your purpose is okay i gave you three steps that you can do in order to help you figure out what your purpose is in the previous video okay the next thing i'm going to give you and this is going to be a freebie it may not last long because i'm probably going to take this list off of my instagram but i'm gonna need you to go to instagram under bearing fruit it's called bear fruit or seed bearing fruit is my at go to seed bearing fruit okay and it should be a pink background with somebody holding a piece of fruit next to the name bear bear fruit okay with that I'm gonna need you to go there. There is a playlist of videos. It's about 20 videos. I talk about business and birthing a business. Birthing a breakthrough in your business. I'm gonna need you to go watch that if you don't know what your purpose is. Cause I need you to start thinking differently, okay? Go watch that list. I'll leave the links to that underneath this video, okay? Next, I need you to do some self-reflection, okay? Some of y'all need to do self-reflection on yourself. I did not know what God was doing with this, but I'm just flowing with him. He needs you to do self-reflection. After you've taken in all of this information, you're going to have to do self-reflection. This is why I told you to do the three-day consecration. But you do that after you have done the work okay you are going to be led to do some things you may need to do the three days while you're doing this work because God may call you on to something longer afterwards there are a lot of people right now that are doing 40 day consecrations I'm gonna start y'all on three so you can get in the presence of God, get the information. You may find yourself getting a lot of information from God at once in that three days. Which may mean he may tell you to extend it for the 40 days and he'll show you how to do that. I have a podcast that I talk about um, how to consecrate before the Lord. I may leave the link in the, in the description as well. Because I'm not sure if it's up or not. But I think it is. But this is something I learned how to do. Early in my walk. And you're going to need it. Because it's necessary. In order to keep yourself in alignment. And understand where God is taking you. And listen to God. Some people don't understand how to listen to God. And a lot of people avoid doing consecrations. Because of the fact they know God's going to pow pow them. <laughs> because that's when he gets you alone with yourself. And he gets to pull out everything. <laughs> That you shouldn't have been doing in the first place. And a lot of people don't want to go there. Because they don't want to see that. And they don't want to get the revelation as to. But I'm going to need for you to be strong grown folks. So that you can go through the examination. Process. Because you need to understand who you are. And what mistakes that you have made. Okay. Okay. 
It could be in relationships. It could be emotionally. You need to understand the things that are going on in your mind. You need to understand what's going on in your emotions. You need to understand physically what's going on inside of you. Maybe you're eating wrong. Maybe uh, you are financially handling your money in the wrong way. Maybe you are handling your social situations incorrectly. You got the wrong people around you. I'm going to dig deeper into that as we go. And some of you, you just simply um, have been mixing spiritual practices incorrectly. Like thinking, well, I saw this Christian do it. I should be able to do Christian yoga or I should be able to do Christian this. But that person is using crystals and it's like, I should be. No, that's mixing. Stop it right now. I had to learn these things early in my walk. And I hope that I'm getting you in your walk where you're like, oh, I was doing that. I need to stop. Some of y'all went out there and read Think and Grow Rich. I love you. I love you. All the principles in that book are based on Christian principles, but it's in divination because they're worshiping the universe. But they're calling it godly principles. I'm going to need you to step away from that right now. I was involved with a business group. They were cool and they st until they started teaching Think and Grow Rich. Because you see, in Think and Grow Rich, there's a uh, premise that they discussed that talks about dealing with uh, sexual transmutation. That right there sounds like it's witchcraft right there. But they use it in their business practices. I'm going to need you to step away from that if you've been doing that right now. <laughs> they call it transmuting their sexual energy into their business formats. Does that sound godly to you? I'm going to need you to take a moment and think about that. If anybody has been involved in any of those types of practices, I'm going to need you to sit down and think about that for a moment. Okay. Step to the left. Step away. <laughs> Next. I'm going to need for you, if you're not married, you're in a perfect place because you need to figure out who you are in order to understand who you're trying to get married to. Little bookie that you was dating when you was a teenager is probably not the dude. Because you didn't know who you was when you was a teenager. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You grow over time. If you're not growing, what are you doing? The person you were with when you were a child, if they ain't growing, go back to my formula. What did I tell y'all? If the person is sitting in the center like a compass, you're going to be growing around them and going around in circles, going around in circles. If you start growing, they're going to start, you're going to start circling them and they ain't going to move. You will start running towards something and if, if you're married to them, you're going to fall flat on your face because they ain't going to move. They want to do what they want to do, and they're going to drag you along with them. Okay. You need to be considering either who you've partnered with, because some of y'all already married, or you need to be considering who you are potentially going to be partnering with. Understand when you start making these recognitions, the devil gonna send you a bunch of counterfeits that look real good. Ooh, he looks real nice. Oh my gosh, he's just oh, he got the muscles to smile. This, that. Ooh, I like that. You bet to pull back, cause that was sent by the enemy. Sorry to tell you. 
for my men, same thing. She got the body. She got the boob. She got the... I'm going to need you to go read Judges when uh, Samson hooked up with Delilah. What she do to him? Okay. Consider who you are connecting with, okay? Because this is going to make a major impact on your finances. Huh? Yeah. What are you building? Some of y'all just want to build a life. Oh, I just want to have a life. I want to have the house and the kids and the this and the that. If you ain't got the right partner sitting next to you and, and then they don't want to do that, ask me how I know. I was in a relationship with somebody that was like this. And I was, they were like, oh, I don't want to get married. I was in high school, didn't care. <laughs> but I still spent seven years in a relationship with that fool. <laughs> Matter of fact, actually, I think we would we knew each other for eleven years. <laughs> oh, forgive me, he's not a fool. But would you rather waste time with an individual, or worse, you may have already wasted a certain amount of years with an individual? But you need to go through the process of becoming self-aware of yourself. Let me explain something to you. When you become self-aware and you have to make this choice to become self-aware of yourself, to understand and to do the work that I was just talking about. And God himself will show you if that person's supposed to be with you. But what I've seen to learn is a lot of people who were not walking with God and were married to individuals that were not aligned with their direction and the purpose that God wanted for their life. As soon as they figured out what their purpose was, that person started acting up real bad and they could not stay with them. I did a video called Force Release. God will force you to release that individual and them you. Because they will, he will make it so uncomfortable you won't be able to stand it. For your own sanity, you'll have to leave them. <laughs> Seriously. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And if you choose to stay, you unstable. <laughs> it is what it is. So, this person is either somebody that is going to help you, meaning and once you determine what you're called to do, this individual is going to come alongside you. If you're already married, you will and are willing to, meaning if this person is willing to walk with you and walk with God, you may find that you already have the aspects to walk together in a cup as a couple and build together the issue is god will continue to allow you to be ordained into this relationship if he sees that you both are working equally together in your purpose but if you're moving forward doing the work doing the self-assessment doing all of this Walking with him, getting in a secret place with God, doing all of this kinds of stuff. But the other individual that you are with is sitting still like a bump on a log. Now, yes, a sanctified wife can sanctify her unbelieving spouse. And he can go back vice versa. But if God has a purpose for you, he will release you from that individual if they don't move with you. I love you enough to tell you that. But he going to do the releasing. Don't you sit up there and say, well, I don't like what they do. I'm going to just divorce them. No. Do the work with God because some of these people, and I can give you about five or six different individuals, that they had to separate from the individual for a season. And God said, I'm going to need you to go back to them. Because what you learn in your season of your walk with God 
is going to make the difference that while he's dealing with you separately, he going to deal with them separately. And he's going to show them just like he showed Joseph who wanted to put her away. <laughs> now that's your wife. And this is what you're going to do with, with this individual. But he need to work on them away from you. Okay. Doesn't always mean it's going to work out that way. Some of y'all been through too much and y'all know the stuff y'all went through because of the stuff that you was doing that was ungodly when you were in this relationship, married, not married. The practices that you were doing that you knew not were not of God, cheating, lying, this, that, and the other, you know what you was doing. <laughs> Tell the truth, shame the devil. <laughs> That's between you and God, not me. But with all of these kinds of activities that you were doing, God needed to separate you so he could identify in your life all of these hindrances. Then y'all going to have to break some curses and it's going to be a lengthy process. It don't have to be that long, but Unless you're willing to do the work, and I'm going to tell you the perfect person to go to if you want to break curses, because she do it every month. <laughs> go listen to Tiffany Montgomery. You will break all your curses. But you need to know what they are first. So I'm going to need you to do the work that I just told you to do so you can identify, sit in the presence of God for about three days, let him talk to you. He may not want you to go to Tiffany Montgomery right now. He may want you to go to her later. He may not even want you to go to Tiffany Montgomery. He may have somebody else for you. I'm going to need you to sit on that. Okay? But I'm going to need you to get yourself together. Why? You got a field that you're supposed to be nurturing. Okay? And because you got a field that you're supposed to be nurturing, I'm going to need you to get yourself together to nurture that field. Okay? Breathe in. Breathe out. <laughs> because... Let me explain something to you because God gave me this revelation. I'm going to go too deep into it. Your partner, if you read Genesis, what was Adam doing? He was tilling the field. He was tilling that ground. You ain't supposed to be tilling that ground. Some of us women got this, this thing mixed up. We ain't tilling the ground. A lot of y'all been plowing and doing the oxen work and all of this kinds of stuff. Because I'm a hustler. I do the hustle. I do the work. I do. Where in the Bible did I say that? Esther. No. She wasn't out there plowing in the field. Ruth was. Don't get it twisted. She was out there. But. Boaz owned that field. So it was his field. And then he ended up marrying her. So she ain't even have to be out in the field that much longer. Because when he came to her, she started messing with the field. He pulled her up out the field, didn't he? Ooh. <laughs> Are we in the wrong position, ladies? Hmm? I'm going to need you to address that. While you're sitting in your three-day consecration with the Lord. Okay? Because some of y'all are operating in the wrong order. I've spoken of this before. And I'm going to even give you the word that I listen to. And you're going to be able to help yourself. Go listen to Apostle Youngblood. Or look for Apostle Richard E. Youngblood on YouTube. He did a word called No Longer Two. I'm going to need you to go watch that. Because he did a beautiful teaching on understanding the out of orderness in the household. Because of the fact that in Genesis, the reason and or curse that was put on the man and the woman was because what? The woman became controlling and the man ruled over her. And due to the fact that they were out of order, 
This man was out here toiling when he didn't have to be. Because remember what he was doing before Eve messed it up. Because he didn't give her the proper instructions. Some of y'all are yoked up with people that ain't even giving you instructions in your life. You are sitting there rolling around in the same circle, spinning around the block, back and forth, over and over, cycle, cycle. Because why? What'd I say? Compass, center, they're self-centered and you rotate, rotating around them, rotating around them, rotating around them. Because they ain't got no instructions to give you. And you sitting up there wondering. Well, you won't be in control and have pride, so you will sit there and you'll go and you're, you'll do the work, but you'll be trying to change them. And God's saying, I don't need you to change them. I'm going to deal with them. Can you come to me and I'm going to deal with you? Oh, God, what we doing? I was not planning to talk about none of this. <laughs> but, hey, I said I was going to flow, so God got me flowing. It is what it is. Because... You got a field. It's a field that you're supposed to be putting your hands to. God gave me a detailed understanding of bread. You want me to talk about that now? You have a field. This field is your central thing. This is the thing. This is going to be your field of favor. But if you are yoked up with the wrong partner, they ain't going to till that field. They're going to let that field have weeds growing. Have you ever seen a house when a man live in a house and he let that ground just mess up? If I could show you the photograph of my grandma's house right now. All the grass done grown up. They need to be taken care of. If you got the wrong partner next to you, that grass going to grow up real high. And you're going to have citations against it and all kinds of stuff. And people going to be wondering, what man is, man left there and he ain't doing the work? What? Why? <laughs> That's why you need the partner because he's supposed to be doing that work. Because that land going to go dry and die. If you ain't tilling it correctly, you can't, if the, the ground is dry and dead, are you following me? Then the grains in which you will put on it, the flax, the oils, the olives, the this, whatever would be put on that ground, it's not going to grow up right. Or worse, you're going to end up with wheat and tares. And God going to let it happen. But you got to be the ones that are paying attention to your field because you got little foxes that are coming to spoil your vines. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? God gave me this and I'm just flowing through it the way he's showing me how to flow through it. What are the things that are spoiling your vine? Um, if you already married, how y'all handling your spiritual life? If you the only one, somebody brought this up the other day. Thank you, Ariel Sparks, for making this point. She said, uh, if y'all married and you the one going into the prayer room and your husband ain't going with you, what are you doing? You and your spouse need to be praying together. I don't know if I gave y'all the vows that Tiffany Montgomery gave us, but... One of them is you and your spouse need to be praying together. What are we out here doing? You need to be praying with your spouse. And I know for some of us, especially, I know I'm a prayer and assessor that I go to war in the spirit. So I'll be like, Lord, are you sure when this man come in this picture, he going to be ready for that? Because I, I, I. I got to tear some things up in the spirit. I can't be out here praying cute prayers. 
I grew up on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm going into slay. <laughs> and I ain't coming out till they did. <laughs> So, with that being said, you got to have the right foundations. Not only that, you need to have the right financial foundation. Come on, God, let's do this. What's your nest egg? How are you planning your household? This is where the financial part comes in. What's your nest egg? How are you planning your financial household? What is the field that you're in? How are you building together? What are the necessities and needs that you have? How are you bartering and trading for that? Are you in stocks and bonds? Are you? What are the commodities of finance in which you are putting away or putting aside? Are you even looking into these things? Some of y'all ain't even looking into these things. What are your estate holdings? Do you have estate holdings? I'm just flowing through this. I'm thinking about what was on that paper that he had me write down. Um, yeah. What is in that field? Flax, oil, merchandise, all of this kind of stuff. He brought my attention to, did I write it in here? Hold on, let me see. Uh -uh. Nothing's moving. Come on. Yeah. He brought me to the attention of what is it that you are putting your hands to? What are you buying? Gold, stocks, bonds, trades, financial, money mutuals. What are you doing? Some of you there are multiple forms from ex different expenses, meaning what is it from the highest quality to the lowest quality and what level and range are you purchasing? Some of y'all are supposed to be having luxury items, but because society tells you that you ain't supposed to be prospering and you ain't supposed to be living out here in a lap of luxury because you're a child of God, what the hell is we out here doing? Are we not children of God? Jesus was walking around in garments and fine rubles, but everybody wants to tell you, oh, Jesus made himself into a lowly man. His garments were covered in rubles and jewels. Honey child, what are we doing? Are you out here eating up your harvest? Are you operating in a level of consistency that you should be operating in this season in order to maintain what it is that God has given you? Ladies, Proverbs 31, woman. Gentlemen, are you tilling your field? Next, are you operating in trades? How are you trading? Are you doing stocks? Are you doing bonds? Are you doing, uh, somebody was talking about, and I've seen a couple of people talking about this Shaddai um, Bitcoin. Take that to the Lord and pray about it. Don't just jump on nothing. But I sat in um, stock meetings and looked into some of this stuff. I was in a, a conference with, uh, what's her name? The one from the Shark Tank. I can't think of her name off the top of my head. Uh, she owned a lot of property in New York. So when I was in New York, I was in one of her conferences. Got front row seats. They moved me up. Come on now. Um, contamination of your finances. Polluting of your money. How is your money being polluted? What are you investing yourself in that may be polluted ground? What types of practices are you having that are polluting your finances? 
Are there any unlawful communications in your finances or financial uh, operations? Next, the field in which you are supposed to be tilling the grain, uh, water. Is your water polluted or is it clean water? Do you have wool? Meaning what animals or what uh, assets do you have? Flax. Are you growing flax? Oils. What's your commodities? Think of the woman with the uh, oil pot. Your drink. Do you have um, olive? Do you have grapes? Because they make wine out of grapes, right? Are you growing these things? What is this? I'm going to need you to look into that, okay? Because these are the things that you need to be paying attention to. As you're putting your hands to certain things. What are you putting your hands to? To grow your field. These are things you need to be identifying. Am I making sense? Because once you have identified these things, what those things are for you, um, meaning what do you have in your household? First, you need to figure out what it is that you can do naturally. Then you need to figure out what you have in your house. Come on, woman with the pot of oil. Who was asked, what you got in your house? What do you have in your house that you can make money off of? I'm not telling you to sell all of your belongings. No, 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 no. We're talking about what do you do naturally? Do you cook? That means you operate in the kitchen. Do you know how to do decor? Meaning you keep your house in order in a certain manner. Maybe you need to do decor. You know that there are sites that you can create decor. Maybe you're an artist and you can create home decor. There are sites that will allow you to create prints and then have those prints put on things. Interest Prints does that. Teespring, you can create certain things. Think about that. What are the things that you got that you can do that you do naturally already in your house? Maybe you like lotions and you can mix lotions, body butters. Maybe you know how to make natural makeups. Maybe you know how to create certain day-to-day -day things. You know right now, there is a new craze on social media talking about being a comfort influencer. These people are just vacuuming their houses on a daily basis, walking on the street, taking their kids out, all this kinds of stuff, going to the grocery store. <laughs> 